through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 248. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of April 23rd. Woo! We're almost done with April. Just yes. flying right through I 2013. Know. Quarter four or quarter one officially done. Yes, exactly. Well, Probably right. at the beginning of this month, but or you halfway know, through this details, month. Details, details. Yeah. Uh, For those of us who aren't financial people, quarter one is done. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Taxes, blah, blah, <laughs> yeah, blah. Yeah. Um, kind of an interesting month. Uh, we're going to start off with the big one, the mm -hmm. big release of the month, and that is Jurassic Park 3D. Yes. Uh, not to be confused with the new Jurassic Park movie. Yes. Apparently some people had issues with that and got all uppity and yelling. Well, not seeing it in the theater. I just was lo when looking it up. I thought, you know, for some reason, I thought yeah. it would be a different movie. I don't know what what I was thinking. You're not the only one. Let me assure you on that. Uh, this is the 3D conversion of the classic Steven Spielberg yes, film. That's right. Uh, it was released theatrically here briefly, uh, or national, I should mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Did very well, and now we're getting the quick turnaround on Blu-ray release. We got a. Uh, 3D Blu-ray, Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet, all in one pack. Very sweet. Unfortunately, though, we're going to pull the rug out from you a little yeah. bit and tell you the special features, not that great. Yes. Though, I will say, caveat, uh, if you already own it, yes. then it's not so great. Or the, the scenario is where it's worthwhile is if you want a Blu-ray 3D version Correct. or you want... You, you don't own yeah, it at all. Yeah, because it has a, a lot of the rollover right. features. Such right. as uh, Dawn of a New Era, all new documentary concentrating on the seismic sea change that the filmmakers encountered when hmm. they realized CGI was the way to most effectively recreate the special effects, making prehistory, concentrating on the film's impre impressive production design. Dino DNA! Exactly, it was great. <laughs> uh, the next step in evolution, uh, in-depth look at the development of the CGI elements of the film, and then sort of all sorts of archive ones like hmm. making of uh, Steven Spielberg directs Jurassic mm -hmm. Park that sort of stuff so you know there's a couple like a couple hours worth of material there so yeah. that's all good but that's all already existed yes. if you own it already the only thing that they really add is a special one uh, exclusive to the 3d one that uh, discusses the conversion of the film with interviews with Spielberg stereo 3d conversion Natch. team and stuff like that so I mean you know you're gonna have a blue gray 3d re-release you might as well talk about turning yeah. it into a 3D <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess that's cool, but I just wish, you know, there had been something for those who already yeah. own it. But, I mean, you know, 3D is is, is hopefully, fingers crossed, never going to be a staple of home entertainment. So, yeah, we'll see. not gonna, that surprising. The, the theatrical conversion was pretty pretty good. So, well, yeah. I'm curious to see what they do for the home, <laughs> version, home video version. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Mm -hmm. Moving right along, we're going to talk about The Impossible. Yes. This is the... Uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, narrative drama. Whitewashing? Oh. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's part of it, but uh, it's a drama inspired by the tsunami in Southeast Asia in, yes. was it 2004? Yes, I believe that so. That really ter like destroyed like Indonesia and Thailand, all sorts of places like yes, that. Yes, really wrecked the Philippines. I yes. Uh, dr drama about a family that separated during that, uh, led by Ewan McGregor and Naomi Watts. Yeah, it's like uh, the mother and child get separated from the father, or is it the father and child get separated from the mother? I think there's two sets. I think he's oh, okay. with two kids and she's with one. I see. So there's like... Man, too many kids. Yes, sir. So that's a whole other discussion in and of itself. Uh, Naomi Watts nominated for an Academy Award for that role, so good honor of that. Yeah. Also want to note, this is the uh, English language debut of Juan Antonio Bayona, the director yes. of The Orphanage. Very good right. film. So um, I mean, that's great to see him make his way over. Yeah, and it was originally a Spanish film that lived in in Japan at, during the time of the tsunami and everything, mm. but was visiting the Southeast Asia area. Mm. But and that, that's, I think, the only thing that makes me not just rail on how stupid it was this movie is whitewashed. Is The sure. director is a Spanish director. It's a story about a Spanish family, and he cho and he in some way chose to pick white people, you know, white yeah. Britishy people. So it, you know, it happens, I yeah. guess. I, I mean, as long as he is, he made that choice. I hope he made that choice, and the studio didn't make the choice for him. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it, but it's hard it, to say that with any casting choices right, nowadays. Right, exactly. But the release has uh, comes in either Blu-ray, ultraviolet, or DVD ultraviolet. Sadly, okay. there's not a complete one. Uh, in terms of special features, it's decent. You know, you've got an audio commentary with uh, Juan Antonio Biona and the writer and producer of the film. Hmm. Uh, you have a featurette about the casting of it and a featurette about realizing the impossible, as well as a few deleted scenes. So, you know, this film, if you've seen it, the 
the effects are really yeah. impressive. The casting, I mean, whether you think it's accurate or not, I mean, I like Naomi Watts and Ian McGregor oh, a lot, and I the kids, too. the kids were pretty interesting as well. So you know, it's it's. It's a it's a it's a decent package. And right? entertainingly enough, I will say it does make it is less annoying when I realized that they had turned a brown family into a white family rather than when I first saw the trailer, which is like, oh, you have a tsunami that wipes out a whole bunch of Asian people, mm. and you focus on the two white people that happen to be there. But it's actually less annoying that it's just that they changed the race. Right, right. That's yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I also want to say, you know, this is one of those films that I thought was going to be huge. I remember seeing the trailers for it before yeah. it came out, and it sort of like snuck into theaters and then snuck out. So yes. I'm glad, hopefully, people get like check the it out. Like tide before a tsunami, it oh, slowly pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> snap. That's well played. Well Thank played, you. sir. Next up, we're going to talk a documentary yes. uh, from a massively successful documentary filmmaker, Ken yes. Burns, and we're talking The Central Park Five. This Almost is the documentary filmmaker. Who amazingly has not won an Academy Award? I mean, the guy did you know pro Prohibition, mm -hmm. baseball, basically Civil anything. War, yeah. yeah, I mean, the guy is incredible. <laughs> well known for his things. I guess this stuff is usually so extensive that's a bit of a problem. But and yeah. I think sometimes doesn't he do miniseries, so they're yeah. more on television. So maybe no, that's PBS. Why he get... Like he's usually all over PBS. So yeah, he should I mean. get Emmys, right? Isn't Emmys television? Yeah. Okay. Not, that's the thing. Oscars. Dude yeah. still deserves the Academy Award. Oh, like, I agree. He, still agree. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, know, it's sad that he hasn't won either. If besides, gonna... like, you know, Michael Moore and a few other people, like, he's one of the quintessential yeah. documentary yeah. filmmakers. I would agree. Uh, anyway, this is a documentary in a 1989 case of five black and Latino teenagers who were right. convicted of raping a white woman in Central Park, and after spending a whole bunch of time in prison, a serial rapist confesses to the crime. That's... And so it's, you Ooh. know, very much a discussion about prejudices mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, shock. You know, in the past, people were prejudiced. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> Spoilers. Wait, people, are, people stopped? Or uh, not anymore, Spencer? Is that what you're yes. saying? I think it that's more shocking. Right I think that right would be now. more shocking to yes. me. That people have, are no longer prejudiced. Yes. Than <laughs> yes. So, needless to say, you know, it's got a modest amount of special features. There's a a, a little featurette about a New York wilding, which is a term that came out big time okay. after that. Uh, making the film a more in depth sort of discussion of it. Again, still very short. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a featurette about family business. You know, Ken Burns worked with. Sarah Burns and David McMahon together to make this project, so you know, keep it within the family. Yeah. And there was a, another one about uh, New York's response after this all occurred. Hmm. So that's all, that's all again, but like 20 minutes between yeah. all that, which is a little bit unfortunate. Another one, though, that's sort of a little bit more extensive is After the Central Park Five, which catches oh. up with four of the men involved and updates us on what happened to them, which I think is cool. You yeah. see, this is the actual kind of postscript yes. I would like to see, you know. Like, like that's what every everybody who watches a documentary wants yes. to find, see a postscript, even if it's... A well, especially for something that's so tragic. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. it's like, you know... Um, like Paradise Lost, the West oh, Memphis yeah. Three. Uh -huh. Like that's one of those ones that everyone's like, "What happened to them next?" Exactly. What to them next? Yeah. So you it's know, like, it's... did they get out and everybody said sorry and they lived happy lives? No. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Yeah. Um, do you remember that? Um, was that movie with Sam Rockwell, The Conviction? Or yes, was it? I, think um, so. I believe that's what it was called. Um, but the whole thing about that was it was based on a true story, and it. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind? That's not the no, no, no. Oh, okay. This is the one where Hillary Swank, that was Hillary Swank was the sister who went to law oh, school to right. get her yes. brother out. And the whole thing about it was, you know, it was a really interesting story. And then it proceeded that, you know, immediately after he got out, like, he did something stupid and died. And so there, it was a whole thing, you know, with the advertising. Tragic. Of it, they, well, they, they didn't want, they didn't want to mention what happened after. And so, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 postscripts are very interesting. Yes. You just hope that they're. Um, Conviction, that is the name okay, of it. Yeah. So. You just hope that they're helpful rather than a spoiler? No, no you, just, you just hope that there's more interesting story and yes, it's not just true. an abrupt end. You, yeah. you get to this for point, you're invested in the characters, yeah. and then they die yeah. or something like that. Like like if there was a re redone postscript of Bowling for Columbine, it would probably be, and that shit still happens. Yeah. Sad. Sadly. Like, Sadly, yeah. <laughs> All right, that brings us to our last film of the uh, week, mm -hmm. uh, one that came out this year already. We're already Indeed. talking about 2013 releases coming out on Blu-ray and DVD. Talk about short windows for things. Seriously. And that is Gangster Squad. Woo! This is uh, Ruben Fleischer's latest, latest film, mm -hmm. the man who did uh, Zombie Land. you know, yes. very, very talented filmmaker. Uh, story about Mickey Cohen, a gangster in the Los Angeles area, I believe during the 40s and 50s. I wanted, yeah, I think so. 
Um, I think it's post World War Two. Yeah, but uh, you know, I guess you would say a tepid response theatrically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people did not seem to love it. I feel like it was a bit harsh. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was quite as bad as people seem to make it out. I, I to can be. understand people maybe complaining that the movie wasn't maybe as exciting as it was pretty looking. Yeah, but that's I do true. think it's kind of silly that uh, I think you and I've spoken about this a few times off camera that. That it was s compared so directly to the Untouchables. Oh, I did that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll like, take credit for that. <laughs> like, like you know, but I mean, like in people's in people's dislike of it, it's like, well, the Untouchables did it better. Well, come on, the Untouchables is a completely different film in a completely different era with a much different cast. I also like, feel like people have a bit more of a rosy memory of the Untouchables, or sort of like I don't feel like they're that far apart. Like yeah, I mean, how many of those people have gone back and watched The Untouchables recently and, you know... Probably probably not a ton, but sort of like, I feel like, you know, The Untouchables is still, is better, but like, I feel like people made it out into this bigger thing than it yeah. actually is. Like, it's an enjoyable film, yeah. but like, I'm not gonna break my back to go see The Untouchables. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Uh, in terms of a release, though, this is probably one of the more interesting ones. It has a Blu-ray, DVD, ultraviolet copy all coming out together, and the audio features are pretty decent. as a commentary by Ruben Fleischer, though I hear it's a little bit Blah, but you know, I'm still glad to hear you know from the source. That's pretty cool. Exactly. Uh, there's a thing called Gangland Files, which is a picture-in-picture -picture movie experience with you know Ooh. interview snippets of video commentary, trivia, historical trivia, production factoids. What happened to picture-in-picture? -picture? Why don't we bring that I don't back? Know. I don't Come know. On. I'm all for it. I yeah. would totally be down. You know, I love like the pop of video, so let's do more of that. Yeah, I mean, for all those sports fans out there. Yeah. Uh, then there's a whole ton of. 15 different behind the scenes featurettes Ooh. for a total of 46 minutes, which are, you know, Emma Stone on Grace, Josh Brolin on Omara, the real Mickey Cohen, you know, stuff like that. Short little two, Short little three thing. minute interviews. And then the uh, last one that caught my attention was they, um, they did. Then and Now, or two things. They mm -hmm. did Then and Now, a short little feature about the locations that, you know, were in the film versus what actually was there in reality, Ooh, which neat. is sort of interesting yeah. to see how things evolve. Yeah, because L.A. has definitely changed. Yep, and then they have the Rogues Gallery episode about Mickey Cohen, um, talking about the, the, the actual, real gangster, okay, so yes. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, neat. Yep. I guess that brings it to an end this week. You know, uh, you can join us for our next episode when we talk Ed Harris, in honor of pain and gain, mm -hmm. and you can find us at... Yeah, it's very impressive. You Thank got you. some guns there. Uh, we're at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Because these pythons are sick. <laughs> Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Mm -hmm. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. Miro. Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some badges. Stick them all over my face. Good times. Leave us some iTunes reviews. Give us stars and thumbs on YouTube. We like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Like, don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.